The constant pie is world famous, and has been for centuries. It is so famous, in fact, that on March 14th every year as of recently, individuals celebrate Pi Day, a day celebrating the mathematical constant, and there's really no secret as to why. If we examine modern science, the constant pie appears everywhere, and in hindsight, we can see just the sheer brilliance of our ancestors in recognizing a pattern in the ratio of circumference to diameter of a circle, which is pi. The first known references of the ratio between the circumference and diameter of a circle came from the ancient Egyptians and ancient Babylonians roughly around 2,000 years before Common Era. The exact years aren't known. Both of these earliest known ratios approximated pi slightly differently, but both got one decimal point of pi correct, approximating pi to about 3.1. This indicates that the ancient Egyptians and ancient Babylonians didn't necessarily have the best approximation. However, as we will see, they got the ball rolling on the understanding of pi simply by documenting it. The next best approximation or better understanding of pi would not come until 250 years before Common Era, roughly 1,750 years later. This new bit of knowledge of Pi would come from the legendary ancient Greek mathematician and astronomer Archimedes, most famously known for the Archimedes Principle. He was responsible for correctly approximating a range of Pi, which gave us the second decimal place for Pi, giving us 3.14. Another 400 years would pass until, in roughly 150 years into Common Era, another ancient mathematician and astronomer, Ptolemy, would improve our approximation of pi by another decimal place to give us 3.141. Roughly 330 years after Ptolemy in 480, an ancient Chinese astronomer and mathematician, Zhu Chongzi, would more than double the precision of approximating pi, giving us seven correct decimal points in the approximation. Zhu Chongzi's approximation would hold as the best approximation of pi for nearly a century. Many individuals during this time would try to obtain a better approximation of pi, but none were successful. Even Fibonacci, famous for the Fibonacci sequence, could not calculate more than three decimal places of precision in the calculation of pi. The next improvement to the calculation of pi would come around 1400 from the Indian mathematician and astronomer Madhava of Sanaganagrama, who would improve the approximation of pi to 10 correct decimal places with the discovery of power series expansions. Another famous mathematician years later, Leibniz, would come up with the same power series formula for pi, confirming Madhava of Sanganagrama's formula and what we now know as the Madhava-Leibniz series. For centuries, many individuals would improve the precision of the calculation of pi, however, would make small mathematical errors leading to a few digits to be incorrect. In 1706, the Greek letter pi was first used as a variable representation of the ratio between circumference and diameter. It was introduced by the Welsh mathematician and close friend of Isaac Newton, William Jones. 42 years later, the popularity of the variable pi representing this ratio would be solidified when the extremely influential Swiss mathematician Leonhard Euler used pi to represent the same ratio of circumference and diameter in a publication. Further understanding of pi came in 1761 from another Swiss mathematician, Johann Heinrich Lambert, who proved that pi was irrational, or rather that pi could not be the ratio of two integers. Then, before the turn of the 18th century, another famous mathematician, Jean marie Legendre, would approve upon this knowledge and prove that pi squared was also irrational. It wasn't until 1882 that the next important landmark was made in our understanding of pi. This landmark came from Ferdinand von Lindemann, who proved pi was transcendental. Rather unfortunately and quite comically, the progress made on the understanding of pi almost got turned back centuries for individuals living in the United States state of Indiana, when in 1897 a bill was proposed in the state congress making the official value of pi 3.2. 
This bill passed the state house unanimously, but luckily got held up in the Indiana State Senate by a Purdue University professor who contested the bill for obvious reasons. The funny thing is that this is an even worse approximation than what the ancient Egyptians and ancient Babylonians had obtained. The first improvements to our approximation of pi in the 20th century came in 1910 from an Indian mathematician, Srinivasa Ramanujan, who found multiple rapidly converging power series formulas for pi. The most popular of these being the Ramanujan Sato series. Our approximations of pi continued to improve throughout the 20th century, however, in the 1950s our approximations had begun to get exponentially better with the use of computers. As computers performed better, our approximations also got better. Some notable individuals who contributed numerous improved approximations of pi during this time were Yasumasa Kanada and the Chudnovsky brothers, David and Gregory Chudnovsky. The Chudnovsky brothers not only computed better approximations of pi, but also developed a new algorithm for computing pi, which is a variation of the Ramanujan Sato series. This algorithm is still used in computing better approximations of pi today. Moving into the 21st century, better approximations of pi continue to be performed. In 2009, computation of the value of pi shifted from industrial supercomputers to homemade personal computers when the French computer programmer Fabrice Ballard broke the world record approximation of pi on a home-built PC computing pi to just under 2.7 trillion decimal places. Many individuals would break this record on home-built PCs, servers, as well as in the cloud, with the current record holder being Timothy Mulliken, who in 2020 computed pi to 50 trillion decimal places. I didn't go through all of that history of approximating the value of pi to bore you. I'm sure plenty of you found the history interesting. However, the reason for its inclusion is to show the importance of simply identifying and documenting these important constants and coefficients that we see when conducting our scientific work. It is only when we know where to look when we can begin to improve upon our knowledge of that constant or coefficient. Nevertheless, we have extremely capable, ever-improving computers that will most likely give humanity more of this knowledge much quicker than as was the case with Pi. I hope this showed you the great advantage we have today by being able to utilize incredibly strong computational power that is ever improving.